Hi friends, welcome to EPG Parshala project. Here I am Dr. Bindu B, Assistant Professor, Marthi of Less Training College, Thiruvananthapuram, Kerala. Today we are going to discuss about the economic perspectives of education. Let me start the module, Education, Economic Reforms and Innovation. The main objectives are to explain the relationship between education and economics, to analyze the various changes in economic conditions over the years, to explain the impact of economic conditions on education all over the world, to explain the impact of economic conditions on Indian education system. Education is intended to make contribution to the society as well as to the nation. If it is to be realized, education must go hand in hand with economic and social development. The economic reforms initiated in the past have made notable contribution to the development of education in many ways. The concept of education has undergone dramatic changes in the last century with the initiation of various economic reforms across the world. Even the meaning and purpose of education has been changed in reflection to the changes in the economic world. Initially, education was meant for the privileged class only. Religious institutions hold the monopoly of imparting education to the allied section of the society both in the east and west. With a wave of democracy in social setting across the world, transition took place in the education sector also. It took away the concept of segregation and incorporated new ideas of equalization and decentralization. The economic and political forces are now setting the tracks for the movement of education. Education is now being considered as a basic need and regarded as a tool for human development as well as national development. In this context, the impact of economic reforms on the education needs to be analyzed. We should start from the planning, that is planning as a means for better education. Earlier, it was understood that like economic planning, the education also needs to be planned for any kind of development to happen. Planning is basically to structure and formulate a methodology to achieve certain aims and targets with the scheduled time span. The state accepted the responsibility of providing education to the masses. The chief concern was on public welfare rather than profit guiding principles. An educational plan refers to an effort on planned and deliberate change to be brought about in the system of education for achieving identified relevant objectives. Therefore, educational planning involves decision making exercises to effect changes in the educational process so as to achieve specified goals by the best possible means. UNESCO has examined the concept and defined educational planning as the application of education itself to instill in students a rational and specific approach to problems. Educational planning has become very popular in almost all countries of the world. The UNESCO and World Bank are early promoters of educational planning in the world. The UNESCO has been very active in the field of educational planning in the third world countries. It provides training to top educational planners, conducts research, arranges seminars, offers expert advice and publishes report. Without planning, there can be little intelligent direction to activity and activity will be meaningless and ineffective. It is through planning purposes are established. Educational planning has become an absolute necessity because of increasing social problems. Problems such as increasing population, human resource needs, ecology, decreasing natural resources and hap has had application of scientific developments all place demand on educational institutions for solution. If educational organizations have to meet these problems, their planning becomes a necessity and planning competence become a mandatory. 
planning in education thus becomes an essential component of the administrative process. There have been changes that is from planned economy now it is moving on to the market economy. The transformation of a centrally planned economy what we call as CPE into a market economy cutting across nations is creating a new trend in education sector across the world. In a market economy the production and distribution of goods is mainly done on the basis of demand and supply conditions. The market forces are the guiding principles in deciding the availability of goods and services in the economy. Those goods will be produced more which have higher demand. Education is value to that of a good in a market economy and is produced to meet the supply requirements. The spending in education is considered as an investment which could earn returns in future. Higher education seems to be a private good and that is to be consumed only by those who pay for it. Market values like productivity, effectiveness, accountability and competitiveness are increasingly being embedded in global education reforms. This is based on the assumption that education will improve according to the logic of enhancing performance of market economies, opening doors to competition and choice. As a result, standardization, consequential accountability have been commonly proposed as solutions to improve the quality and effectiveness of teaching and learning in many school systems. The idea of marketization of education has been at the core of global education reforms according to this philosophy. Now let us pass on to another movement that is neoliberalism. The entry of profit concern into the field of education has led to the emergence of a new reform in education sector namely neoliberalism. It was an offshoot of the classical liberalism that followed in the western economies. The sharp recession experience in two decades of 70s and 80s led to such a movement. It was rooted on the ground of profitability without any consideration for the wages and working condition of the people and dismantled the state sector. It was the German scholar Alexander Rousseau coined the term neoliberalism in 1938. Do you know what led to this movement? There has been rapid expansion and demand for higher education known as massification of higher education. The conventional university sector is not able to cater to the demands of the new section of the rapidly growing eligible age group population for higher education. As an alternative, private enterprises are sought to accommodate this evolving pressure on higher education in various forms. Thus, the policy of privatization and deregulation became the thrust areas of neoliberal world. The whole world was carried over by the same philosophy. Next comes globalization. Globalization is a cultural paradox. It simultaneously unifies and diversifies people and cultures. It unifies national education policies by integrating them with the broader global trends. Because problems and challenges are similar from one education system to another, solutions and education reforms agendas also are becoming similar. Due to international benchmarking of education systems by using common indicators and the international comparison of student achievement the distinguishing features of different education system are becoming more visible. Globalization has also accelerated international collaboration, exchange of ideas and transfer of education policies between the education systems. Analyzing global policy, developments and education reforms has become a common practice in many ministries of education, development agencies and regional administrations. Therefore, the world's education system inevitably share some core values, functions and structures. This result in the change 
in the focus of educational development from structural reforms to improving of quality and relevance of education. Knowledge is the driving force in the rapidly changing globalized economy and society. Quantity and quality of highly specialized human resources determine their competence in the global market. Emergence of knowledge as driving factor result in both challenges and opportunities. It is now well recognized that the growth of global economy and increased opportunities for those countries with good levels of education and vice versa. The benefit of globalization accrue to the countries with highly skilled human capital and it is a curse for the countries without such specialized human capital. Developing and transition countries are further challenged in a highly competitive world economy because their higher education systems are not adequately developed for the creation and use of knowledge. Converting the challenges into opportunities depend on the rapidity at which they adapt to the changing environment. There lies the case of knowledge economy. Many countries are reforming their education system to provide their citizens with knowledge and skills that enable them to engage actively in democratic societies and dynamic knowledge based economies. The fundamental requirement for this is that everyone has sufficient knowledge and skills in literacy, numeracy and information and communication technologies that is ICTs. Rather than shifting emphasis on to standardized knowledge of content and mastery of routine skills, many of the advanced education systems are focusing on flexibility, creativity and problem solving through modern methods of teaching such as cooperative learning and using multilateral clusters, community networks and information communication technology in teaching. According to the existing body of educational change knowledge, it seems that many of the ongoing education development efforts are not likely to bring the improvements expected. For example, the widespread approach of increasing external pressure on teachers and students in order to improve the quality and effectiveness of education has not been proved to be sustainable. As a reaction to the overemphasis on knowledge based teaching and learning, ministries in China, Japan, Singapore and in the European Union are developing more flexible forms of curriculum, introducing authentic forms of assessment and accountability and supporting teachers to work together to find alternative instructional approaches that promote learning of essential knowledge and skills required in knowledge economies. Instead of focusing on single institutions, education reforms are beginning to encourage clustering of schools and communities. At the core of this idea is complementarity and cooperation between the members of the cluster. Clustering and networking appear to be the core factors in economic competitiveness. Economic competitiveness is the key attribute of economic development and growth. In the knowledge based economies, in the last two decades expectations of education, especially the qualities desired in educational and trained people have dramatically changed. For example, Microsoft CEO Bill Gates argues that training the workforce of tomorrow with the high schools of today is like trying to teach kids about today's computer on a 50 year old mainframe. It is a wrong tool for the times. Therefore, business leaders, politicians and educators are looking for solutions for improving economic competitiveness and thereby economic growth. Do you have any idea about the recent economic reform initiated in our budget of this year? According to the budget of Union Government of India 2016, it was stated by the finance minister that the government's agenda is to transform India in a direction described by set of economic reforms 
framed in terms of nine pillars that is agriculture, rural development, health, education and skilling, infrastructure, financial sector, governance including ease of doing business, physical discipline and tax reform. This list effectively covers almost every aspect of the economy, but still provides a usual framework with the details revealing more about priorities and possibilities of true economic transformation. In this regard, education received some recognition of quality problems and plans were announced to enable selected higher education institution to reach international standards by relaxing regulation. Skilling continued to receive attention as well, but the allocation of funds and expertise may not be enough to make a rapid enough impression in India's needs. Then we will pass on to the world of innovation. In a world of competition, innovation is highly essential. Innovation is the need of the hour for remaining in the forefront of competence. It is a competitive tool. What do you mean by innovation? According to Peter F. Drucker, innovation is the practice of creating new use, new value, new market or new product. Education prepares the individual to be innovative. Living in and working for a world of innovations requires fundamentally different attitudes, knowledge and skills from the citizens. Technological adaptation and innovation have been the main drivers of economic growth in developed countries since Second World War and are providing to be the important factors also in many developing countries. Therefore, teachers and students need to work with and learn from innovation in order to be able to contribute successfully to the development of innovation in the knowledge of economy. An innovative concept of development is the sustainable economic development. To make it clear, we should know what is sustainable development. In the opinion of World Commission on Environment and Development, that is WCED, stated in its report, that is our common future, it is impossible to separate economic development issues from the environmental issues. Many form of development erode the environmental resources upon which they must be based. Environmental degradation can determine undermine economic development. Many present development trends leave an increasing number of people poor and vulnerable. Much of the economic growth pulls raw materials from forests, soils, seas and waterways. Ecology and economy are becoming interwoven locally, regionally, nationally and globally into a net of cause and effect. What is sustainable development? Sustainable development seeks to meet the needs and aspirations of the present without compromising the ability to meet those of the future. This is the definition given by the World Commission on Environment and Development that is WCED. Education should prepare the individual to adopt new concepts and new values to education. One such concept is the sustainable economic development. Economic growth is always accompanied by environmental damage because there will be increasing pressure on environmental resources if any development is to be happen. But the planners should see that the economic system never comes to a breaking point to be detached from its ecological roots. The technological choice for enhancing productivity and quality should not replace labor and makes them jobless. It should provide work to every hand and meet the basic human needs for the entire population. It should maintain quality and standard of goods and services at globally comparable and qualitative level to successfully compete in the globalized market economy. It should generate environmental ethics in the whole society, promote social harmony, restore environmental stability and reinforce 
political sovereignty. Then comes the technological revolution. Educational systems around the world are under increasing pressure to use the new information and communication technologies to teach the students the knowledge and skills they need in the 21st century. With the new challenges initiated by globalization, there rises the call for modifying the concept of education and the instrumentalities used for practicing education need to be changed. The globalization process is being accelerated by revolution in information and communication technologies. National boundaries, customs and traditions are becoming less relevant as global educational excellence has become the motto of modern educational scenario. The development of the ICT sector presents a unique opportunity for a cross national flow of knowledge and information. As the world is more digitalized and every walk of human life is technologized, a shift is required in the delivery on pedagogy used in the current education system. E-learning provides an environment in which the lessons and lecture notes are deployed on web servers. Technology enables learners to sit in comfort zone of his home and learn. Online degrees and open universities offer distance education. Now, let us have a look into the impact of economic reforms in Indian education system. As we know, education in India is provided by the public sector as well as the private sector with control and funding comes from three levels, central, state and local. Under various articles of the Indian constitution, free and compulsory education is provided as a fundamental right to children between the ages of 6 and 14. The ratio of public schools to private schools in India is 7 is to 5. India has made progress in terms of increasing the primary education attendance rate and expanding literacy to approximately three quarters of the population into seven to ten age group. By 2011, India's improved education system is often cited as one of the main contributors to its economic development. Much of the progress, especially in higher education and scientific research, has been credited to various public institutions. While enrollment in higher education has increased steadily over the past decade reaching a gross enrollment ratio of 24% in 2013. At the primary and secondary level, India has a large private school system complementing the government run schools with 29% of students receiving private education in the 6 to 14 age group. Certain post secondary technical schools are also in private sector. With regard to primary education, the Indian government lay emphasis on primary education also referred to as elementary education to children aged 6 to 14 years old. The Indian government has also banned child labor in order to ensure that the children do not enter unsafe working conditions. The District Education Revitalization Program DERP was launched in 1994 with an aim to universalize primary education in India by reforming and vitalizing the existing primary education system. The DERP, which had opened 1.6 lakh new schools including 84,000 alternative education schools delivering alternative education to approximately 35 lakh children was also supported by UNICEF and other international programs. In January 2016, Kerala became the first Indian state to achieve 100 percent primary education through its literacy program Adulya. Then with regard to secondary education. Secondary education covers children aged 12 to 18, a group comprising 8.85 crore children according to the 2001 census of India. The final two years of secondary is often called higher secondary denoted as HS, that senior secondary or simply the plus two stage. A significant feature of India's secondary school system is the emphasis on inclusion of the disadvantaged sections of the society. A significant new feature has been the extension of SSA to secondary education in the form of the Rashtriya Madhyamik Shiksha Abhiyan. A special integrated education for disabled children, IEDC, program was started 
in 1974 with a focus on primary education, but which was converted into inclusive education at secondary stage. Another notable special program, the Kendriya Vidyalaya project was started for the employees of the central government of India who are distributed throughout the country. The government started the Kendriya Vidyalaya project in 1965 to provide uniform education in institution following the same syllabus at the same pace regardless of the location to which the employee's family has been transferred. The National Policy on Education NPE of 1986 has provided for environment awareness, science and technology education and introduction of traditional elements such as yoga into the Indian secondary school system. Then with regard to the private schools, according to current estimates 29% of Indian children are privately educated. With more than 50% children enrolling in private schools in urban areas, the balance has already titled towards, tilted towards private schooling in cities and even in rural areas. Nearly 20% of the children in 2004-05 were enrolled in private school. Most middle class families send their children to private schools nowadays. There are also international schools. As of January 2015, the International Schools Consultancy ISC, listed India as having 410 international schools. Then with regard to higher education, after passing the higher education secondary examination, that is the standard 12 examination, students may enroll in general degree programs such as bachelor's degree in arts, commerce or science or professional degree programs such as engineering, law or medicine. India's higher education system is the third largest in the world after China and the United States. The main professional body at the tertiary level is the University Grants Commission, which enforces its standards, advises the government and helps coordinate between the center and the state. Accreditation for higher learning is, is overseen by 12 autonomous institutions established by the University Grants Commission. In India, education system is reformed. In the future, India will be on the largest education hubs. As of 2012, India has 152 central universities, 316 state universities and 191 private universities. Other institutions include 33,623 colleges, including 1,800 exclusive women's colleges, functioning under these universities and institutions. 12,748 institutions offering diploma courses. The emphasis in the tertiary level of education lies on science and technology. Indian educational institution by 2004 consisted of a large number of technology institutes. Distance learning is also a feature of the Indian higher education system. The government has launched Rashtriya Uchata Shiksha Abhiyan to provide strategic funding to state, higher and technical institution. A total of 316 state public universities and 13,024 colleges will be covered under it. Then coming to technical education, from the first five year plan onwards India's emphasis was to develop a pool of scientifically inclined manpower. India's National Policy on Education NPE provisioned for an apex body for regulating and development of higher technical education which came into being as the All India Council for Technical Education, that is AICTE, in 1987 and through an act of the Indian Parliament. At the federal level, the Indian Institutes of Technology, the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, the National Institutes of Technology and the Indian Institutes of Information Technology, Rajiv Gandhi Institute of Petroleum Technology, are deemed of national importance. The Indian Institute of Technology are among nation's premier education facilities. The UGC has inter-university centers at a number of locations throughout India to promote common research. Example, the Nuclear Science Center at the Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. Besides, there are some British established colleges such as Harcourt Butler Technological Institute situated in Kanpur and King George Medical University situated in Lucknow, which are important center of higher education. Central universities such as Benares Hindu University, Jamia Millia Islamia University, Delhi University, 
Mumbai University, University of Calcutta, etc. too are pioneers of technical education in the country. And with regard to vocational education, India's All India Council of Technical Education that is AICTE reported in 2013 that they are more than 4,599 vocational institutions that offer degrees, diploma and post diploma in architecture, engineering, hotel management, infrastructure, pharmacy, technology, town services and others. There were 17.4 lakh students enrolled in these schools. Total annual intake capacity for technical diplomas and degrees exceeded 34 lakh in 2012. According to the University Grants Commission, total enrollment in science, medicine, agriculture and engineering crores 65 lakh in 2010. The number of women choosing engineering has more than doubled since 2001. There comes the open and distance learning. At school level, National Institute of Open Schooling NIOS provides opportunities for continued education to those who miss completing school education. 14 lakh students are enrolled at the secondary and high secondary level through open and distance learning in 2012. Various state governments also introduced state open school to provide distance education. At higher education level, Indira Gandhi National Open University, ICNO, coordinates distance learning. It has a cumulative enrollment of about 15 lakh surveys through 53 regional centers and 1,400 study centers with 25,000 counselors. The Distance Education Council, that is DEC, an authority of ICNO, is coordinating 13 state open universities and 119 institutions of correspondence courses in conventional universities. To conclude, even though the country has achieved tremendous growth in the past years in the field of education, it requires tremendous effort to achieve the targeted growth rate. Be a part of this mission. Thank you.